I'm currently down under. I'm in Australia. And while I'm here, I'm gonna be going to some of my favorite American fast food restaurants to try some menu items that they don't serve in the US. And I'm gonna be comparing those restaurants to their Australian counterparts. All right, let's do this. I'm breaking these fast food restaurants into three different categories. There's Mexican inspired, chicken, and burgers. For each category, I'll try the Australian version of an American fast food chain, and then an Australian born chain, and then see how they all stack up. First up is the Mexican inspired category, so I'm heading to an Australian Taco Bell. Taco Bell has had an on again, off again relationship with Australia. They first opened a store in 1981, with a resurgence in the late 90s before eventually closing up shop in 2005. The current iteration has only been in existence since 2017. And there are currently 39 Taco Bells in the whole country, which is only a handful more than another long standing Mexican chain called Taco Bill. Not a joke. I think there's actually been a long history of legal battles over how similar the names are. From what I can tell, Taco Bell is not nearly as popular in Australia as some other fast food chains are. But they do have a bunch of menu items that they don't have in the US, so I was excited to try it out. The design of these things was really fun to me. I feel like you don't see stuff like this in the US. A lot of the locations have this big Ola sign, which is amazing. I feel like I had to do a double take when I saw that the drive through went clockwise around the building instead of counterclockwise like in the US. The decor was pretty cool, and I do appreciate that a lot of their locations incorporate murals from local artists. When I got there, I was pretty overwhelmed by the menu. I mean, there were so many items that weren't served in the US that I wasn't gonna be able to try them all. I ordered the Lava Crispy Chicken Taco, which has fried chicken tenders inside, the Cheesy G Taco, which seemed at least somewhat similar to the American Cheesy Gordita Crunch, and what were called Seasoned Hot Chips. Being the cosmopolitan man that I am, I knew that chips is the name that Australians use for fries, so I could only assume that this was the Australian version of nacho fries. Just as I was about to place my order for the Seasoned Hot Chips, I caught sight of a picture on the menu directly next to the fries of actual chips. And that's when my brain started short circuiting. If I ordered the chips, would they give me the chips or the fries? If I ordered the fries, would they know what I meant? So what I said was, I'll get the seasoned hot chips. And then I kind of panicked and tried to make sure that I was ordering the right thing. So I said, and those are the chips, right? Not the crisps. And she was like, um, yeah. In retrospect, this was embarrassing for a number of reasons. Number one, I found out that the word crisps isn't even used in Australia to describe chips. That's more of a British term. And two, apparently the distinction between what we call chips and fries in the US is just chips and hot chips in Australia. So I'd already clarified that I wanted the hot chips when I ordered. Anyways, I tried to backpedal and just be like, sorry, in America we call them fries. And she was like, We'll know what you mean. For dessert, I ordered a chocadilla, which was a quesadilla with chocolate sauce instead of cheese. And then I got churros, not like cinnamon twists in the US, but actual churros. For my drink, they did not have Baja Blast, which was a bummer, so I just got a water cup. I did notice that the menu had a Schweppes freeze, which would have felt really out of place in the US. I feel like American Taco Bells need to shock and awe the audience, but Schweppes just felt a little too tame. No offense, Schweppes. Some things that I saw but didn't order included the Boss Burrito and the Chipotle Crunch Burrito. I also read online that at one point they had an item called the Mighty G, which if I'm understanding this correctly is a cheesy gordita crunch or cheesy G taco, but instead of the cheese between the hard shell and the flatbread, they have Vegemite. If anybody watching this has tried both a cheesy gordita crunch and Vegemite, let me know in the comments if you think that would be good. I can't really decide. I'm leaning towards no, but I'm still curious. I started off by trying the Lava Crispy Chicken Taco. I was trying to figure out if this was the same sauce from the American Lava menu, but I couldn't really tell. I was a little distracted because the food just smelled the different from the Taco Bell items I was used to. Hard to describe what I mean by that, but I think it had to do specifically with the smell of the tortilla. Like those were definitely different. My review of this taco is that I don't think it would make the cut on an American Taco Bell menu. Then again, people are still ordering the cheesy bean and rice burrito in the US, so who knows? Shots fired, I know. Okay, before we move on, I do want to point out that the sauce packets were different. First of all, they were made with like a stiffer material, so that threw me off. And then they only had mild and fire. Okay, next I tried the cheesy G taco. And again, the flatbread was definitely different from from what goes on the American Cheesy Gordita Crunch. I think the hard shell might have even been different. It had a tougher texture and just kind of crunched differently when I bit down. I would say the ranch sauce tasted fairly similar though. As a side note, no option to put a Doritos shell on the Cheesy G Taco. And I would assume that's because these Taco Bells opened long after PepsiCo slash Doritos sold Taco Bell. Anyways, I added some fire sauce, which the sauce itself tasted pretty similar. It did look like it had a slightly different consistency. I moved on to the seasoned hot chips, AKA Aussie nacho fries. And these were definitely different from their American 
American Cousins in terms of the texture, in terms of the taste of the potato, and in terms of the seasoning. They also did not come with nacho cheese sauce. So far, Australian Taco Bell was proving to be a step down from American Taco Bell, but that was all about to change when I moved on to dessert. First, I tried the Chocodillo, which I would say was fine. The chocolate sauce was really good, but it was just on like a regular tortilla. I wonder if there would be a way to make like a sweet tortilla in order to take this to the next level. And then finally, I tried the churros. So if you've watched my content before, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of the cinnamon twists. I wouldn't go so far to say that they taste like packing peanuts, but I also don't go out of my way to correct people who do say that. But these churros, man, I mean, these things slapped way better than cinnamon twists in my opinion. The chocolate sauce plus the cinnamon sugar combination was just delightful. So this was by far my favorite thing that I had there. I found out later that apparently having soda fountains and free refills is pretty rare in Australia. A lot of the restaurants I went to after this had bottles and cans available for purchase instead. On my way out the door, I made sure to ring the bell to let them know that I was leaving satisfied. Next up, it was time to try an Australian Mexican chain called Guzmani Gomez, also known as GYG. Guzmani Gomez is the eighth largest fast food chain in Australia and their locations outnumber Taco Bell's five to one. My first impression is that unlike Taco Bell, they were actually going for a Mexican vibe here, both in terms of the decor and in terms of like the music they were playing with actual Spanish lyrics. I didn't go in with a plan, but I somehow ended up spending 29 Australian dollars here, which is like 19 US dollars, but still. I asked the guy working there what the most popular item was, and I thought he said that it was definitely the the Kelly burrito. And I was like, okay, I'll have a Kelly burrito. Turns out he had said the Cali burrito. I just forgot that he had been speaking with an Australian accent. The Kelly burrito. Cali burrito? Kelly burrito. I am an idiot. The Kelly burrito was very tasty. It seemed like really high quality meat. It had guacamole. It was super filling. Also, okay, what? Like, look at this little burrito plate or holster thing. It's genius. They had signs up advertising a $3 hard shell taco, so I ordered one of those. It's roughly $2 US. And I would say it was fine. I think the shell was tasty. The ground beef was a little bit different than what I was used to. It just wasn't a Taco Bell taco and it wasn't an authentic street taco. So that just left it kind of somewhere in between. Next, I had a soft taco with pulled pork. I was excited to get to try meat options that Taco Bell didn't offer. As a side note, the tacos were all served with forks, which was fascinating to me. I'll tell you what, the pulled pork was really good and the flour tortilla was much better than the one I had at Australian Taco Bell. I think you could also order a corn tortilla from GYG if you wanted to. I did feel like it needed salsa or something. And at that point I was like, is that something that I forgot to order? I did a quick lap and didn't find any hot sauce packets or containers or dispensers anywhere. Maybe access to condiments is just like a cultural difference. I don't know. For dessert, I went out on a limb and ordered a nacho sundae. The options were either chocolate or dulce de leche. And so again, I deferred to the recommendation of the guy working there and he said chocolate. So I said, all right, let's do it. What they brought me out was a dulce de leche one. So that's what I ended up trying. I was curious to see if these would taste like normal tortilla chips because one time I tried to make a choco taco with ice cream and just a regular hard tortilla shell and it was not good. But the good news was these chips were coated with cinnamon sugar. Although to say that the coating was uneven would be an understatement. The first few were fine, but then I caught sight of a mountain of cinnamon sugar at the bottom of the container. And yeah, if you get a chip that's got way too much of it on there, it kind of ruins the experience. These were okay. I would say maybe even good. I am a big fan of soft serve ice cream. And I think in Taco Bell terms, these would be better than cinnamon twists, but not quite as good as Cinnabon delights. Just my opinion. As I was reviewing the footage I took of the menu, I saw that they had something called nacho fries, which it's like, man, after all of that confusion at Taco Bell, they just had something called nacho fries the whole time. I don't know, man. GYG also had its own coffee bar, which is not something I would have expected at a Mexican inspired restaurant. But I learned pretty quickly that most Australian fast food chains have like a full on espresso machine. There were also signs that said that they served breakfast, which sounded really good. I mean, I do love Qdoba breakfast and Taco Bell breakfast. My take on GYG is that if we had these in the US, I'd go there all the time. So if either Guzman or Gomez is watching this, please expand to the US. I'll be your biggest fan. Okay, my final ranking for the Mexican inspired category. In that third spot, we've got Australian Taco Bell. Coming in at number two would be American Taco Bell. And coming out on top is Guzman y Gomez. No disrespect to Taco Bell in either country. Although if my friends who work at Taco Bell are watching this, those churros with the chocolate dip would be a phenomenal addition to the American menu. Okay, next up we're headed into chicken territory, but first I'd love to take a minute to tell you about Raycon, who's the sponsor of this episode. I don't know if you guys have ever had a long flight with a crying baby, but that was the case for me on my 14 hour flight to Australia. Well, Raycon 
Raycon's Everyday Earbuds offer the perfect way to tune out all the noise and tune into something great. Their audio quality rivals all the big name audio brands, except they're not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. I've really enjoyed using them when I'm working at coffee shops, and they've come in clutch at the gym. They're water resistant, so you don't have to worry about sweat, they don't fall out, and they don't get in the way of overhead movements. They also have an awareness mode that allows you to hear what's going on around you, so I feel safe wearing them when I'm running outside. I also haven't had to worry about them dying on me because they have eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Raycon doesn't assume that all ears are the same, so they come with different size gel tips for you to choose what's most comfortable for you. I've been trying to read more recently, and the noise isolation has helped me to zone into a book, even if there's a TV on in the room or a lot of ambient noise. So if you want to check out what Raycon has to offer, including earbuds, headphones, and more, you can click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash samreed to get 20% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. That's a good deal and could make a good Mother's Day gift. That's buyraycon.com slash samreed. All right, my first stop in the chicken category was Australian KFC. It's always been funny to me when the guys from How Ridiculous talk about getting KFC because I guess I just didn't realize how popular it was in Australia. Turns out it's the fourth biggest restaurant chain in Australia with over 700 locations. And as I was driving around, I felt like I saw them everywhere. I'd be willing to bet that there are more KFCs per capita in Australia than there are in the United States. I just feel like I've passed so many of them. And as it turns out, I was right. There are a little over 4,000 KFCs in the US with a population of 333 million, which comes out to one KFC for every 77,600 people. In Australia, there are 712 KFCs with a population of 26 million, which comes out to one KFC for every 36,500 people. So Australia has almost double the number of KFCs per capita. That is wild. I placed my order, and when I said thank you, the guy working there responded by saying, too easy, mate, won't be long. And I love that. I mean, that was like the coolest thing I've ever heard. I could never pull that off. For my drink, I ordered a bottle of Mountain Dew since they didn't have a soda fountain, and it looked like they were still using the pre-2009 Mountain Dew logo. The bottle was also highlighter yellow and said energized on the label. I had to look up why that was there, and apparently in Australia, Mountain Dew used to not have caffeine. So when they introduced caffeine, they had to add the word energized to the label to differentiate it. Fascinating. One thing I learned at this KFC is that the word burger doesn't necessarily have the same connotations in Australia as it does in the US. For me, a burger means some form of red meat ground into a patty, usually beef, but obviously some other variations as well. But my understanding is that in Australia, the term burger can apply to any sandwich that has a meat patty or filet on it. For example, the bacon lover's burger, that's a chicken sandwich. The barbecue bacon stacker burger, again, another chicken sandwich. And the first item I tried was called the zinger burger, which you guessed it, chicken sandwich. I'm not sure what makes the zinger different from their original recipe burger. They both kind of looked the same to me, but I ordered the hot variety of the zinger burger. Didn't end up being all that spicy or really spicy at all. The chicken filet itself was thick, like it was a decent chunk of meat, but it was also very chewy. The bread was good, and I would say overall the taste was okay. I was almost getting like horseradish vibes, so I checked inside, but it seemed to be just mayo. I think it's safe to say that I prefer the original chicken sandwich served at American KFC. I moved on to the popcorn chicken. I was excited to try this because they recently got rid of popcorn chicken on American KFC menus, I think around the time they introduced their latest form of nuggets. Again, I forgot to order sauce, and this was starting to become a pattern. I think you need to order sauce and condiments. I would say that the popcorn chicken was pretty tasty. The size itself varied a lot. The pieces themselves were smaller and more inconsistent in size than KFC nuggets, but the snack size portion was great. Next up, I tried the barbecue bacon stacker burger. And I don't know why, but it just felt so bizarre to me to stack two chicken fillets on top of each other. Like this thing just looked insane. I know we have double and triple burgers in the US, but something about the double chicken just felt particularly unhinged. Honestly, something that I would expect to see from an American menu. And I hate to say this, but this was just straight up not good. These chicken fillets were also chewy and the bacon was not at all what I was expecting. My expectation was the bacon that they serve in American fast food restaurants like, you know, the bacon emoji. But what was on this sandwich was more of a cross between American bacon, country ham, and Canadian bacon. Very light colored, very different taste. Just a lot going on here. Finally, I tried a barbecue slider, which is one of the kids meal options. Ironically, I thought I could order this in the US when I was doing research for my kids meal video, but as it turns out, I had just accidentally stumbled across the Australian menu. So kind of a full circle moment here. My first impression is that it did not look like the pictures. I dug in and I realized why the barbecue stacker didn't taste that good to me. And I think it was because the barbecue sauce was a little Weird. Okay, maybe not weird, but just significantly different from barbecue sauce that I'm used to. It was almost like too sweet. I don't know. All in all, the kid slider was fine. I would say the flatbread itself was probably the highlight. Okay, for the Australian born chicken restaurant, I went to a place called Red Rooster. With 335 locations, it's the largest fast food chain that originated in Australia. The funny thing was that when I was reading about it, I just always assumed that it would be pronounced Red Rooster, but then it was kind of an aha moment when I finally heard someone say Red Rooster because Australian. I ordered the spicy combo here, which came with chips and a can of soda. I got another Mountain Dew Energized. I also got a pineapple fritter, which I've never seen at an American fast 
fast food restaurant. I thought that would be fun. The chicken sandwich had two tenders instead of a patty, which was interesting. I would say that the quality of chicken seemed like it was much higher than at the Australian KFC. The hot sauce they used was pretty tasty, but still not that spicy. The fries were decent, I would say pretty thick cut, and the more I ate, the more I enjoyed them. Maybe they just took some getting used to. I'm gonna show my ignorance here on the topic of fritters, but from what I could tell, it's just a slice of pineapple that was battered and then deep fried. I took my first bite when it was still pretty hot, and I wasn't sure I loved it. So I tried again when it was a little cooler, and it started to grow on me. I was in a little bit of a time crunch because I needed to go hold the koala, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go check out the other video I made while I was in Australia. But because I had to leave so quickly, I'm not sure that I gave Red Rooster a fair shot. Still though, I would say that I liked it. So my final rankings for the chicken category. In third place, Australian KFC. In second place, Red Rooster. And then in first place, American KFC. And then last but not least, it's time to check out the burger category. And for the purposes of this video, I'm referring to the American definition of burgers. So sandwiches made with beef patties. And for this category, I'm throwing in an extra restaurant just for fun. First, I went to the Australian version of Burger King, which is called Hungry Jack's. It's the exact same chain, but when Burger King first opened in Australia in 1971, the trademark for that name belonged to another local restaurant. So they just went with Hungry Jack's instead, and it's been known as that ever since. There are over 440 Hungry Jack's locations in Australia, making it the fifth largest restaurant chain in the country. There were so many things on the Hungry Jack's menu that were new to me. There was a whole category of burgers called Grill Masters, a sandwich called the Aussie Grilled Chicken, a tropical Whopper that had pineapple on it, and even fairy floss for dessert, which is what Australians call cotton candy. Not to mention there was a whole coffee menu called Jack's Cafe, which again, looked like they had a full-on espresso machine with serious coffee drinks. I saw online that at one point Hungry Jack's sold something called the Baconator, which in the US is a Wendy's menu item. I was excited to try that, but they did not have it on the menu at the location I went to. I think they've discontinued it. What I ended up ordering was the Aussie Double Whopper Meal and a little something called Burger Bites. I also finally remembered to get condiments this time, so I got ketchup, this aioli dipping sauce, and barbecue sauce. Okay, the Aussie Double Whopper was huge. It had two patties and a ton of toppings, including eggs and bacon. I felt like I had to get the Aussie Whopper because, you know, when in Rome. And as I bit into this one, I started to realize that my criticism of the bacon at KFC might have been misdirected. I just figured KFC served me bad or undercooked bacon, but the bacon at Hungry Jack's was very similar. I even went back and checked like the menu picture of it, which is how it's supposed to look, and it looked the same. So this was not a fluke. After a little research, I realized that Americans and Australians have very different ideas of bacon. I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but if you're from Australia and going to the US or vice versa, you'll just need to mentally prepare yourself for the difference. I also did not realize until biting in that this burger had beet in it. I still found it enjoyable though the egg was definitely a more prominent flavor than the beef. I would say that the burger itself tasted fairly similar to the Whopper in the US. I will say that the further I got into the burger, the more that the beet kind of dominated the flavor. And so I think I'd prefer it without the beet. This combo came with fries and a drink, and this time they actually did have fountain drinks. So I got a small vanilla Coke. I wasn't entirely sure how refills worked though, because the fountain was behind the counter. Next, I dove into the burger bites. And I guess this is kind of what it sounds like. Little fried bites that have the ingredients of a burger. So mostly meat and cheese. It would be like a hush puppy if you added meat to it and made it slightly less good. I'd say that it was okay when dipped in ketchup and a little better when dipped in the aioli dipping sauce. When I went to try the barbecue sauce, I noticed that it was called barbecue plum. And that was another light bulb moment for me. I was like, I wonder if that's why I didn't like the sweet tasting barbecue sauce at KFC because it had plum in it. And from what I can tell, this is another difference between Australia and America, just significantly different barbecue sauces. When it came to the burger bites, I couldn't decide if I would order them again if I had the opportunity in the future, but I think I'm leaning towards no. The second to last place I visited was called Grilled Healthy Burgers, which is the 11th biggest fast food franchise in Australia with 152 locations. My first thought was that trying to make burgers healthy might defeat the purpose a little bit, but I was still excited to try it. I put in a mobile order and just from the menu, I really liked how things were described. It did give me more of the vibes of like a Shake Shack than a McDonald's though, if that makes sense. I have a very strict definition of what can be considered fast food and it felt like this was slightly outside the lines. Nonetheless, I ordered a bacon with cheese and their classic healthy fried chicken sandwich. Once I got there, it kind of confirmed my suspicion that this wouldn't necessarily classify as a fast food restaurant. It was sit down with no drive through and I'm not 100% positive since I was picking up my food, but I think the waiters bring your food to your table. Still, I was excited to give it a shot anyway. The burger was solid, but dang, I did the bacon thing again. In my head, I'm just so conditioned to expect American bacon and I have fallen for this trap thrice. I couldn't really decide if I was a big fan of the burger. I mean, qualitatively, I knew that it was better than everything else I'd tried, but sometimes you're just in the mood for 
for a Whopper. You know what I mean? I moved on to the quote unquote healthy chicken sandwich. And I think they call it that because they fry it in olive oil. I could tell that the bun, which was the same one that was on the burger was like trying to be healthy. Like it wasn't what you'd find at a Chick-fil-A or a Popeye's just like covered in butter. The chicken itself was very herb heavy. Like there was some sort of seasoning that was very dominant in the taste profile. I also ordered fries and some Chipotle aioli. And again, it tasted good. I just wasn't sure that I preferred it to getting like, you know, McDonald's fries with ketchup. I also got a raspberry Schweppes to drink. I feel like I'd just been seeing it all over the place. So it was finally time to give it a try. And I did not mean to react that dramatically. I just think raspberry is like a really tart flavor. Okay, my thoughts on grilled. I'm just not really sure what to make of this when it comes to comparing it to something like Burger King. I just feel like it's a totally different category. So the jury's still out on this one. Okay, and for my final restaurant coming in as the second biggest chain in Australia with almost a thousand locations, it's McDonald's. Also affectionately known as Macca's. The only restaurant with more locations in Australia is Subway, which personally I consider more of counter service than fast food, which is a controversial take, I know. But check out this McDonald's location in Sydney. It literally had a nightclub above it. When it came to unique Australian items at McDonald's, I feel like the menu was honestly pretty similar to the American menu. Like KFC, they were double stacking chicken patties, like on the double McChicken, which again is wild to me, but hey. You do you, man. They call their other sandwich, like the one that's the Chick-fil-A competitor, the McCrispy. They had a couple burgers designated as Angus burgers, so I got the barbecue bacon one. And you might be thinking, Sam, didn't you just say that you don't necessarily like Australian bacon or Australian barbecue sauce? And you would be right. Somehow I forgot and ordered it again. I am my own worst enemy. In my defense though, there was a ton that was happening between these restaurant visits. And if you wanna catch up on that, you can watch my other video I filmed in Australia after you finish this one. The biggest noticeable difference was that the Mick Cafe menu was a lot bigger. Again, it felt like a much bigger deal. Like it had a separate counter, the full on espresso machine and everything. I wasn't about to get coffee though because it was like 11, 15 PM at this point, but they did have a pretty expansive cafe snack menu. So I added a donut to my order. I doubt those items are like baked in house, but it was still kind of cool. I tried the burger and immediately realized the error of my ways. Like when will I I learned. I'm not sure, but it was not today. Honestly, the burger wasn't too bad. The meat was pretty high quality. Maybe that's the Angus part. And the barbecue sauce wasn't quite as abnormal to me as it was at previous restaurants. Like still not 100% what I was used to, but not terrible. The burger also had an ungodly amount of mayo on there, just oozing out the sides. Also, if I look super tired here, that's because I was. I had fries and a drink with my burger and the fries were okay, but they just needed more salt. I was curious if this ketchup was the same as it is in the US, because I'd heard that Australians call ketchup tomato sauce. Once again, I had to remember to order the ketchup with my meal because the packets are not available to just grab by the handful. Taste wise, I couldn't really tell a difference, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were some slight variations. I also couldn't really notice any differences with the Coke I was drinking, but I do think that the smell small sizes are smaller than they are in the US. And finally, I tried the donut. It was good. It was like a little cold, which leads me to believe that the pastries arrived at the store frozen. Overall, it was pretty solid, but kind of hard to tell if it was worth the price since I was still a little shaky on the currency conversion. Okay, here's my final ranking for the burger category. I'm gonna go a little off the rails on this one if that's okay. So I'll start with Australian McDonald's and then next up would be Hungry Jack's, so Australian Burger King. Above that is Burger King and then American McDonald's. And then above those, I would put Jack's Cafe and then Mick Cafe. Cafe if I'm allowed to separate those. And then finally, at the very top, I would put grilled. But again, I kind of feel like it's in its own tier. So is Australian fast food better than American fast food? I would say that the resounding answer from an American perspective is that the Australian versions of US chains fall short of the originals. But the Australian originals tend to outshine everything else. Places like Guzmani Gomez or grilled. American places definitely have better access to and variety of sodas. Although maybe that's a deliberate change in Australia. I don't know. And Australian fast food restaurants do coffee way better than American fast food restaurants. But that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments which of these items you'd be most excited to try. And if you wanna watch the other video from my trip to Australia, you can click right here. If you're watching this and struggle with your relationship with food, there are some resources linked at the bottom of the description. And don't forget that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's gonna be okay. I'll see you soon.